Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's Bertrude, and today we're using a build that is truly the stuff of nightmares. This is the Butcher. It's a level 40 build, we've got 35 vigour and then minimum strength and dex for our weapons. We've got the strength knot for a touch more damage and the opaline hard tier for the damage negation. And here's a quick look at the armour and talismans we're using on the build. We've got a limited amount of weapons on this build. First off we've got the Dismounter and that's equipped with Bloody Slash. As well as the Dismounter we've also got two Sacrificial Axes. The first one's equipped with Endure and the second one's equipped with Wild Strikes. And then finally in our second weapon slot we'll be carrying the Pulley Crossbow and that's equipped with Explosive Bolts. And that's the build guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like the content, it'll really help the channel. But it's time for you lot to sit back, relax, get your feet up and enjoy the video. They call him the Butcher, a reputation carved in blood. The ones he leaves behind, a sight to behold, a red river flows through mud. Tales are told and stories passed down, from family to family and from town to town. Don't stay out late and watch over your shoulder, for the lands between aren't safe when the butcher's around. For the butcher, his story started young. He was but a lad when he saw his mother, his father, disemboweled and hung. His father worked hard every day of his life. He provided for his family, a young son and a wife. He made an honest living, he was proud of his trade. He wore a thick apron stained with sweat and blood and he had a talent with a blade. For the young lad's father was a butcher and a good one at least. His son would sit and watch as his father carved into all manner of beast. The red river would flow from arteries and from veins. The sun would sit and watch, transfixed and in a gaze. For in his mind there were dark thoughts he couldn't disguise, as he sat and stirred contently into those lifeless eyes. That fateful day soon came that would change the young lad's path. A dark figure came wandering, a red blade in hand and on his face a white mask. The screams of his mother and father chilled him to the bone, but he sensed a strange feeling of calm as the Red River arose. See for the boy, blood was familiar, he saw it every day. It was his mother, it was his father, it was the butcher, it was home. When the deed was done, his parents left swinging, their innards hung low, drip, drip, dripping. The dark figure approached, red blade in hand, white mask on face, and the boy just stirred with wide eyes and an unsettling smile that would never be replaced. They shared a moment, the two of them, maybe one of an understanding and reason. Then the white mask took a sharp step back as he realised he looked into the eyes of a demon. The boy's mind was already a troubled one, having found peace in meat, blood, bones and insides. But what he witnessed today had unlocked a true darkness and the white mask knew there was now nowhere to hide. He backed away slowly, and soon turned to a run. For he knew he had sealed his own fate, his day would soon come. They call him the Butcher, a reputation carved in blood. The ones he leaves behind, a sight to behold, a red river flows through mud. Tales are told, and stories passed down. From family to family, and from town to town, don't stay out late and watch over your shoulder, 
for the lands between aren't safe when the butcher's around. He roams the lands between in search for a canvas in his game. You see he's an artist and his brush is blood and pain. Don't get caught alone, stay in twos and threes. He's out there, always watching, in the woods and in the trees. If he finds you, you should fall on your blade, be it sharp or dull. For his painting shall not be quick, it shall not be merciful. He takes his time with each canvas, each one a work of art. When the masterpiece is complete, he'll surely feel it in his heart. For the unfortunate souls he finds, their bodies are left in a mess. But each one of them, every time, each one of them left fingerless. Why the fingers, you ask? Well, the answer's simple and clear. It's not for glory or trophies. It's not even to incite fear. You see, the butcher's work is hard and tiresome. He often works up an appetite. And this is where the fingers come in. They calm his hunger in just one or two bites. However, the butcher's not picky when it comes to the delights of the flesh. There's so much choice, ears, livers, spleens and the rest. They say he carries two great axes, two great axes and a colossal blade in which he attacks with. Blade sharp enough to cut through rock, so flesh and bone are no problem. But problems for the butcher simply don't exist when he has the evil tools to solve them. They also say he wears a thick grey apron stained with sweat and blood. He has all the equipment for a bloody job just like a butcher would. How many white masks have come and gone, all fell under his blade. As the time has passed, their blood has merged, decade after decade. Truth be told, he no longer sees the mask. Each mask is just a body to control. But when he rips them open, the Red River flows, he gets that strange feeling of a memory forgotten. Home. They call him the Butcher, a reputation carved in blood. The ones he leaves behind, a sight to behold, a red river flows through mud. Tales are told and stories passed down, from family to family and from town to town. Don't stay out late and watch over your shoulder, for the lands between aren't safe when the Butcher's around. Okay guys, that was the story of The Butcher, I hope you enjoyed that. Obviously a nice little uh, poem that I wrote to summarise this character and tell you a bit about his history. Yeah, it was a poem, <laughs> not something I've ever done for any of my other characters. But I enjoyed it, I absolutely loved writing it. The more I thought about it and the more I started um, thinking about this character's history, I'd always known his history but I never thought about putting it in a poem before. And uh, it's something I really wanted to do. I think it was a nice little tribute and a nice way to tell this character's story. Who knows, maybe I'll do it again in the future. I don't know, but I enjoyed it regardless. And uh, yeah, the, the Butcher, an absolute psychopathic mass murdering killer. His mother and father were brutally executed in front of him as a young lad. His mind was already a troubled one, having watched his father carve into all of these different beasts and animals all of his childhood. He found pleasure in blood and the death of these animals, so he was already on his way to being a bit of a troubled young soul. But then, a dark figure came along, executed his mother and his father in front of him, and that really did seal the deal. Tipped him over the edge, and then he picked up his father's blades, wore his father's apron, and he became the butcher that we all know and fear in today's lands between. The mass murdering bloodthirsty executioner that he is. 
So in terms of the build, it's quite a simple build, guys, really. It's just a low level, it's a level 40 build. It's a low level melee build, pretty much. We've got the spark aromatic and the fire grenades that we're using on this build as well. Just because the butcher likes to char some of his meat before he tucks into his next meal, you know what I mean? He likes it, <laughs> he likes it crispy and well done. But they come in really handy, especially against over level summons. They can do some good damage when our weapons just aren't getting the jobs done. Um, so yeah, the spark aromatic and the fire grenade are a real vital part of this kit. But besides that, we've got the two sacrificial axes and the dismounter. Really cool um, close combat weapons. The sac sacrificial axes are so brutal and awesome looking. I absolutely love them. I picked these because, you know, you imagine a butcher using a short bladed axe, don't you? When he's chopping through all that meat, he's chopping it all up. You imagine him using a couple of axes, much like the sacrificial axes. I mean, maybe we could have used some daggers. There's other options that we could have used, but I just think the sacrificial axes look really cool, especially on this character. They really suit the build. And the, the Endure and the Wild Strikes, Ashes of War that we're using on them come in really handy. I really like using the Endure into some follow-up normal attacks with the axes, or we can use Endure and then switch to our second Sacrificial Axe and get some big hits off with the Wild Strikes. It's a really nice little juggling system that I've got going on with this build. I think of this build as like, as daft as it sounds, I think of this build as being a juggling build, you know. We're switching between our weapons all the time. We're using Endure and switching. We can use Endure and get that into our Spark Aromatic. We've got a limited kit on this build. We're not using any other weapons besides what we're carrying on us at all times. But we're always keeping it... Um, you know, we're always moving things around, we're always switching between our weapons, we're switching between our spark aromatics and our grenades. Then we've also got the pulley crossbow as well, so there's a lot going on, although we're not hard swapping to any other weapons. Limited kit, but a lot of different playstyle options within the kit that we're using, if that makes sense. So yeah, you can see why I call it the juggling build. <laughs> we're juggling around a lot of different aspects. It's a really fun playstyle. It is a really, really fun playstyle, to be honest. Definitely recommend it if you fancy trying something new. Get yourself a dismounter and a couple of sacrificial axes and just go and have fun. The dismounter, obviously, a brutal looking long curve blade. Brutal looking weapon. Again, something that, you know, you're not going to see a butcher using a massive big long sword, are you? But I kind of went with that just because of the uh, visuals of it. I just think it suits the build really well. And you know, butchers use some varied styles of blades, don't you? And who knows what kind of beasts his father was chopping up in his uh, <laughs> in his butchery. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? He could have had some big animals. There's some big animals out there in the lands between, aren't there? So maybe he needed an extra large blade to cut them up with. So you know, it just suits the build. It, it's kind of going with that um, horror type theme that I've got going on with this one. Yeah, I just really like the kit. It's really fun. And don't forget the pulley crossbow as well in our second weapon slot. No one ever expects the pulley crossbow. When they're at low health, we've got those explosive bolts. It just looks so cool. It's such a stylish way to get some kills. It got me plenty of kills in the making of this video. When they're low health, you get the pulley crossbow out to finish them off in style. It's just awesome. Really cool build. One of my favourites. They're all my favourites. I always say they're my favourites, but... The Butcher is definitely um, definitely up there. Really cool character build. This is the last invasion of the video, guys. We've got this really annoying over-level summon just being really passive with the Moonveil. I had to be super um, patient in this invasion. I was really struggling to get any work done, but luckily for me, the Virgin Abductor <laughs> big beastie thing came and uh, gave me a hand. So you'll see the outcome in this in this invasion eventually. He definitely gets what he deserves, this over-level summon, in the end. But I'll let it play out, guys. I'll let it finish off in the background. Look after yourselves, look after each other. Take it easy. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you all in the next one.